quick hack to add a little punch and sparkle to your output film in Premiere Pro CC, but disclaimer. Warning, warning. You still need to be mindful of your sound levels and how loud you are. These go to 11. If you're at the other end, too soft as well. Balance them out. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. Here's a timeline. Film I'm making with a voice artist called Guy. Let's roll 15 seconds start of the film. It does begin with my own voice intro. Meet Guy Harris, undoubtedly one of the UK and Europe's busiest voiceover artists. And it all happened in a roundabout way. You'll notice from the meters here, it's tickling the reds. And what you're trying to avoid, of course, is loading those red meters because when you export the film, it'll be distorted and just sound horrible. Rule of thumb, for me anyway, when uploading for YouTube, I generally aim for about minus 3 dB or negative 3 dB on the peak limiter lights, tickling the orange, tickling the red, trying to avoid them peaking too much. But I'm not panicking if they advance a little more than I'd like because that's what we're going to sort here. Let's add some music to the film. Sound being additive, it's going to make the mix even harsher probably, so you'll need to do some basic level correction, accepting that some of these levels are still riding a little bit above what we'd like. And this will often be the way, especially if you're mixing loads and loads and loads of soundtracks, audio tracks. And this is where the mastering effect comes in. First up, for ease though, I want to master one big finished track. So I drag my sequence as a nested one onto a new sequence. Just two tracks now show, Video 1 and Master Audio 1. Go to Audio Effects, choose Mastering, click Edit. Up comes the dialog box. And to make life simple, we're going to choose one of Adobe's pre-programmed setups. I'm going to go for Subtle Clarity. If your film is going out on the web, you may want to think about boosting the lower end since a lot of laptops, tablets, computers, they don't have a very bass-rich sound system. You can do that with a little tweaking of the low shelf enable. I don't need reverb, so I make sure that's off. The exciter is what's going to give us a, a little more punch. It exaggerates the high frequency sounds. You can drag that to where you want, but don't go mad. You'll end up giving your pets a headache if you overcook this. I choose tube mode for a dynamic tone. Retro gives you light distortion and tape gives a bright tone. Widener will enhance the overall spatial sound. Good for a band. I've got speech and music, so maybe not so necessary. Loudness Maximizer. Now this is perceived sound. Loudness won't suddenly make this go up another notch. 11. But it will give you a little bit more depth. So you can play with that. But again, subtlety wins. Finally, Output Gain. This will be where you put a limiter in front of your final sound. Set to minus or negative 3 dB and nothing will bend the ears of your excited audience. Here's the final 15 seconds masterpiece. Note the levels, no red lights. Meet Guy Harris, undoubtedly one of the UK and Europe's busiest voiceover artists. And it all happened in a roundabout way. I guess I kind of fell into it by accident, really. Are your Friday nights in Alton a bit of a joke? So are ours! Simple sound mastering, sorted. <laughs>